Hello guys, in this video I'm going to explain to you how to use the Fluent Validation NuGet package which is very useful for validating data entities. It provides a very simple syntax. Validation means checking if data contained inside of an entity is meeting the business rules. So let's see an example. I have an entity person which is a public class. It contains two properties, public string name and public integer age, and a public constructor, which is initializing the bo both of these properties with values. Then I am defining another class, which is called person validator, which is extending the abstract validator of person and it is defining a constructor. Inside of the constructor we are going to define our rules for validation. So the syntax is as you can see rule 4 then we are choosing using the lambda expression which field we are trying to validate. So for a given x person we are choosing the name field and we are setting the validation to check for whether it's empty or not so we are not allowing empty values so the string name cannot be null it cannot be also an empty and if it is empty we are going to display a message name is required the same for the age we are setting validation inclusive between 1 and 100 so the value of the age has to be between 1 and 100 and if it isn't there will be a message displayed h must be between 1 and 100. So the abstract validator class is a part of the fluent validation NuGet package so we are going to import this namespace and first of all we have to download this NuGet package so let's let's go to the console app uh, let's right click this go to manage NuGet packages and we can browse for the Fluent Validation and install it. I have it al already installed. So let's get back to the program.cs. I am initializing new variable person. Let's set the name of this person to Matt and the age to 30. Then I am initializing new validator which is person validator and I can invoke the validate method which is a part of the validator and give the person object as an argument. Then I can check whether this result of the result of this validation is valid or not and if it isn't I'm going to loop over each error which is a part of this validation result and I'm going to display this <coughs> display the error message inside of the console window. After all these operations are done, I'm displaying the string finished and I am await awaiting uh, any key input to uh, prevent the console window from closing automatically. So let's run this program. And as you can see, the program finished correctly. There were no errors. But let's change the Mm, the name to, for example, empty string and the age to zero, both of which don't meet the rules that we have set for these fields. This is incorrect data. And let's run this application again. And as you can see, we have two mess error messages name is required, and then H must be between 1 and 100. So this, this is the basic usage of Fluent Validation. It can be used in console applications. It can be more probably used in web applications like ASP.NET Core, for example, to validate the uh, data which is passed through forms to the controller because we have to check whether the data that the user is passing and to the application 
are valid and are meeting the the rules that we that we need to set uh, in order not to corrupt our database. Um, but uh, basically speaking, the usage in ASP.NET Core is the same as as here in the console application. Just we, we would we wouldn't perform the validation inside of the main method, but inside of the action given action inside of the controller. So um, I hope that uh, I explained this uh, this new get package to you well, and I hope to see you soon.